Welcome everybody. Episode four. This is a spiritual, spiritual healing. Find, finding out who you are. Wine and wellness. Let me say that this has been a month of wine and wellness. We have, did, this is number four episode. We are therefore making strides, I think, in our podcast. We are at a place now where we're getting good guests on. Um, we're talking about great topics. We're homing in on what wine and wellness is. Not so much of the wine, but <laughs> the wellness part of it. Give you a little background on wine and wellness and why I got started in the wine and wellness. It all started with us just exercising and pretty much just drinking. And then it kind of just evolved into more things. Now we have wine and wellness yoga. We have wine and wellness uh, bike riding. Uh, we soon will probably have wine and wellness dancing. It's just, it's, it's, it's just a plethora of things. We, it's, it's endless. It's endless with wine and wellness. But the podcast, we came to with the podcast because we wanted to get to more wellness, healing. We wanted to maybe talk about what people may be going through. They may be having things with themselves that they may be going through. COVID's got us going through a lot. Uh, coming out of COVID's got us going through a lot. A lot of people dealing with a lot of things, not just physically, but mentally too. So wine and wellness definitely hits home with the wellness part for me because a lot of my friends, they, they go through a lot. I, I meet a wide range of people on a regular basis and I love to just hear their story. That's what wine is. Wine, wine brings us together. If you haven't been down to Cask and Flights, Cask and Flights is a place where you can just come in. You can, if you, if you want to lounge, you want to sit by yourself. If you just want to enjoy a glass of wine, you can, but the people that I meet on a regular basis in here, they may be tourists, they may be moving home, they may be moving away, or they may just ask a friend where's a good place to go to downtown, and they come in here and I hear a story. So great stories are definitely had or, or listened to over wine. So we may be having a sip of wine or something like that, and on these Cuvenet systems that I have here, we go through maybe about three or four tastings and then people start to open up and then you hear more about what their life is like, where you're in the, where you're in the military, you know, where you lived on the West Coast, where you, you know, East Coast, or you may even lived abroad. But the wine brings us together, I'd say, you know, because of cask and flights. So it's a healing in that, getting your story out, letting somebody hear what you, you know, what happened to you or what you may have experienced. That's the part that I really like about it. I like to sit and I like to engage. I like to talk to people. I like to find out their story. And, you know, if it's a way I can help by getting them in touch with somebody else uh, or maybe just talking to them and talking it out, you know, they may, they may, just, need a, they may just need a hard drink that day to get them over something, but Casting flights is definitely a place, and wine and wellness, it, it also helps. You know, it helps physically. We, we do boot camp class. We do, like I say, yoga class. We're getting bicycle up and going. So, you know, if, if, you, haven't, if you haven't attended a wine and wellness uh, class, I, I recommend it. I recommend it. You meet a lot of nice people, a lot of nice people, a lot of people that, that pretty much are, you know, just like you. And it, you don't have to worry about the... I guess the, the, the hardship of it, like it's not hard. It's, it's 101 workouts, like it's at your own pace. So don't feel intimidated. If you want a good workout, if you want to maybe just have fun or you just want to come in and have a Bloody Mary or mimosa after a workout, we, all, we have it all here for you. So definitely tune in, come, come to Cask and Flights, uh, sit down and talk to somebody. Go on our website, sign up for a wine and wellness class. Whatever you do, you just, just do something. Let's just get moving. Let's just get moving. Let's get out there and let's talk to people. Um, today I have Brian Stocks. 
Now, Brian, I, you know, I met Brian at the YMCA over here doing a little workout. And, um, you know, he's he's in there and he's, I mean, he reminds me somewhat of myself, I'd say. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brian, Brian, go ahead and say something to him and then I'll get back to the intro a little bit. Yeah, man, yeah, for sure. Uh, first, like, thank you so much for inviting me to be on this podcast. Like, I, I really value what you're trying to accomplish with creating that authentic sense of community that you can have with other people and really valuing wellness on like several different levels, you know, physically, emotionally, uh, and with what we're going to talk about today, like, like spiritually, um, I think that's a huge part of wellness. And so like, man, thank you for uh, inviting me and having me on. I appreciate it, it, Brian. You know, I, I, I cannot say enough about, you know, what, how the Lord has blessed me and the way that he moves and the way that he moves me and he positions me in a place where I can talk to and sit and have conversations with people and just kind of engage with them on, on different levels. So, um, you know, Brian, he, uh, he's, he's working out in the gym and, you know, I'm, I'm walking around in there and I'm talking to everybody and, and, you know, he, he has a, he has an aura about himself that's friendly. You know, he's walking around in there. He's 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 picking up things. <laughs> he's lifting things. You know, but it, you trying. Know, he's, I I see growth. I, when I say I see I see him because I was there lifting and doing some of the things that he's doing and asking the same questions as he was asking. You know, a while back, and it's just you know. But all in all, like I say it's that's 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 me. I do that. I I talk to people. I see what they're doing. If I can help them out in the gym or outside of the gym, I'll, I'll help them out. But, you know, we're here today to talk about spiritual healing, finding out who you are. Now, Brian, you're a pastor. Yeah. And the pastor at the rec center right up here. Yeah, I'm one of the pastors at Generation Church okay. at the Rex Theater, mm-hmm. um, right on the other side of Garden Street, right Got here. you. So I'm one of the pastors there. There's a handful of us that are there. So I'm, I'm really honored to be a part of that family. Yeah. So I got to cool attend thing. one of those. I gotta, yeah, dude, I come gotta hang come. out with me. Come I hang out with me to. this Sunday. It's going to be good. It's, it's, we, we'll talk about it. Like, okay, don't, <laughs> don't put me on the spot. See, that's what they do. They, they make you commit. <laughs> that's what they and do. How can you not? <laughs> you know, you're sitting here with them. You can't yeah. be like, oh, you know, but we, we'll, we'll, you like, know, man, we'll just, talk about just, it. Everybody says yes. It's fine. Just <laughs> that's say right. Yes. Just yeah, say yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> man, that's great. That's great. Give me a little bit more, though. Tell me about... The rec center and, and, and how, you know, the, the church up there and how you help and Yeah, and, and for do sure. So, so at, at Generation Church, one of the things that we're going to end up talking about today um, that we do at our, we, we have something that we call growth track. Um, mm-hmm. And because I believe from the beginning, God's plan for you was to grow, yeah. right? Like grow physically and, and even grow spiritually. I think he, that's always been his desire. So um, at Generation Church, we really want to partner with you to see you become everything that God had in mind for you to become. And one of the things that we do uh, every month is we call it Growth Track. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just a way for us to partner with you. Gotcha. Um, one, so you can kind of get a grip on like who we are, right? Like right. We're, we're normal people, right? That are, that are part of this family together trying to follow Jesus on this journey, right? And so um, f- that's one of the things that we talk about. But we also talk about how um, you were uniquely designed by God, right? And so um, there's certain, like you're not an accident, right? right. So, so we think that God knit you together with intention, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. With something in mind for you to become. And so part of discovering who you are Mm -hmm. is discovering how God knit you together. And so we talk about your personality. We talk about, um, you know, kind of how you interact with people naturally. And Mm -hmm. and then even how you, um, and it's always really unique and special because you can always find that um, God meets you where you are. He knit you together. He knows who you are. And so he wants a relationship with you. And so he communicates with you in a way that you're going to receive it. And so gotcha. it's actually a, a really exciting thing that we do to s- see people kind of all of a sudden um, r- really sometimes come to the realization like, um, w- wow, I'm not an accident. Like, yeah. w- wow, like I, I, I do belong here. Right. Like, I, there, there is some sort of purpose mm-hmm. for my life. And um, I might have these tendencies or these personality quirks, but um, it's, 
it's it, everyone's valuable. And so, so we, we do a little thing at Growth Track um, where we talk about the Enneagram, which we'll probably jump into yeah. um, in a yeah, little we'll bit. Yeah, we'll get to Yeah, but it, that's, a, that, that's something cool because at the end of the day, at Generation Church, like, man, we want you to be firm in your faith, right? Right. Like, right. Ha have some sort of firmness um, to, to your faith. Like, I, I believe this. Like, and then also we want you to fulfill the call that God has on your life. Like, God has a specific call on your, on your life, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's different than mine. Um, because we're different people, you know, right. as similar as we are, which we'll talk about in a little bit, actually. Yeah. But um, you have a specific call on your life. And also we want you to we want you to finish well, like on, as you're on this journey, we want you to finish well and not just your life, every season of your life, every step that you're in. Um, and man, if we can partner together in authentic community like you were talking about mm -hmm. um, as we're on this journey, like that, that's a really cool thing. I feel like that's what God's called us to do. So I love it. I love it. So I'm, I'm a believer. I, I believe that Jesus died on mm -hmm. the cross to save our sins. Um, and I am a Baptist. Now, is Generation Church up here, is it, general, I'm, am I getting it right? Yeah, yeah, you're nailing okay. it. You're nailing it. <laughs> is it a non-denomination? Yeah, yeah, we're not, yeah, okay. we're non-denominational. Okay. Um, okay. So, like, we, like, if you're, if you're, like, familiar with, like, a Baptist church, mm -hmm. like, you're, you're going to feel right at home. Gotcha. So. Like you'd really enjoy it there. That's what that's what we tell everybody is like um, pretty much whatever faith tradition that you're from. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a follower of Jesus, like you're probably really going to dig it. So, got you. yeah, got you. No, I like it. I like it. I, I probably I, I know I got a business. I yeah, do. man. I do. Man. So, no, I, I appreciate you giving us a little intel on, on, you know, Generation Church up there and you and yourself. And and we will. Tell me, tell me what uh, what are we drinking today? So I mean, you, man, you busted out the scotch on a wine and wellness podcast. Well, you busted out the scotch, which I love. Scotch. I'm down for that. Yeah. yeah, and it looks like you got a little Caribbean Reserve. Like, I do. That's nice. I do. So I'm, aged I, in a rum barrel. Oh goodness! Let's Listen, go. If you guys know me, I'm not a scotch drinker. I don't drink scotch, but I want to be a scotch drinker. So I found something that I like, and I like the Glen Levin Caribbean Reserve. It's, it's smooth. You get a little bit of that, that age, that barrel in there. Um, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this. Now, I had mine over the rocks, and uh, I think uh, you you drinking yours neat. Neat, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And traditionally, that's how you want to do it. You gotcha. want you want to do it neat. I should have done it neat. No, no, no. Hey, man, you're getting into it. it. You're get getting it into it. it. All it does is it just changes the flavor a little bit. So, man, I don't need to do like that. I'm not a, like I'm not a professional scotch drinker. Mm. I think it'd be weird if a pastor was a professional scotch drinker, but I, uh, <laughs> but, but I know a little bit about it. Okay. And so like I. Uh, so there's all kinds of stuff. I, I like to get it neat. Mm -hmm. And then there's, I was telling you uh, before we started, like there's all kinds of little things that you can do like as you're tasting it. Right. And even if you take like a, a drop of water and mm -hmm. you drop a, you just put one drop of water in it, you'll even see it happen. Like it kind of separates the oils gotcha. um, that are in the scotch and then it'll totally change the flavor. So I, I, I really enjoy it because I yeah. think it's really interesting. Um, so it's pr probably a lot like wine. Wine is really interesting where it, it comes it, from and yes. all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. So scotch is really similar in... Uh, there, there's all kinds of, uh, there's all kinds of cool little things that you find out about it. I got to get into it, y'all. I got to get into it a little bit more. I, I didn't think that I could put a drop of water in there to separate. So I got to, I yeah. got to experiment a little bit with the scotches. I do. <laughs> but hey, listen, man. So I guess getting into the podcast a little bit deeper now. So we, you taught me something. And I don't think a lot of people know about this. Mm -hmm. Not anybody that I talk to, mm -hmm. you know, and in my circle is, is, is here compared to maybe yours. You have a congregation. Yeah. Um, so Enneagram. Enneagram. Yeah, Enneagram. That's E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M. -E mm -hmm. You can spell too, I man. Spell. Killing it. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> I, it took a little practice. Believe yeah. me, I messed it up a few times. Yeah. <laughs> so Enneagram. Now, it's a personality test. Yeah, it's just a personality gotcha. test. And, and Enya means nine, okay. right? And okay. Graham means just diagram. Mm -hmm. Like, so uh, we always tell people at the church, like, we're not getting anything, like, spooky when we say Enneagram. You know right. what I mean? Because some be people are like, is this magic? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> it's, that, right? like, it's like, no, that's not our team, bro. Like, no, that's not, that's no, no. not, that's not no, us. actually, you're not. <laughs> and it's, so, I mean, it's, it's interesting as it is. Um, when you when you you know you talked to me about it and then I started to do 
my own little research and, you know, me preparing for today's podcast, just thinking about things. And after I took the test, I was like, man, you know, I didn't know. I didn't really know who I was because mm. I've never taken a personality. Test. Oh, OK, yeah. So I, I didn't really know where I fell, you know, but there are taking any personality test. It'll tell you kind of where you are. It will. I guess yeah, some dip, will. And yeah. it will tell you like how you know, things that you do that align with what you do and you didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I was, you know, I just know, I just know I come in here and I work. I know that I own a bi couple <laughs> businesses and I do those things and I want to see them succeed. Yeah. And then when you're taking a test and it shoots that number out and you're like, that was, that's kind of me. Yeah. That's, that's, that's me, you know? So I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued to talk to you because you're a certified Enneagram coach. Well, with all of us at the the church, with what we do with Growth Track, mm -hmm. when we do it, like we really want to try to be educated. Gotcha. And, and so, like I'm not, like like I said, I'm not the only pastor at Generation Church, and there's lots of us that'll kind of jump in and teach through our Growth Track mm -hmm. kind of thing that we do. So we all really want to be educated, okay. um, and we want to be able to give you something if you come to Growth Track. So we have these booklets that we give you that have all kinds of information okay. um, that are, are really helpful. So we want to equip you. Right. So. You know, be equipping ourselves is just part of it. Educating ourselves is just part of it. I got you. I got you. Well, man, listen. So we got Enneagram here. And well, that's pretty much the bulk of the conversation because it's so intriguing. Mm -hmm. And I want to let everybody know out there that you can take these personality tests and be okay with them. And you finding out who you are. And that's all a part of the wellness part of you. Because if you're going out there and you're looking for somebody and you, 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 you may be with somebody, you want to know how you are so you can pretty much be a better person and be a better you, Yeah, you know, for either that person or just for yourself, you know, and understanding. So, I mean, you know, what's the difference between Enneagram and another personality test? Like another person, like a, a really popular personality test is like a DISC profile. Okay. Like, I don't know if you've heard of that before, but okay. a, a DISC profile is one that like lots of... Uh, uh, that's been around for a long time. Enneagram's been along, around for a long time, but l like you said, it's recently become popularized. Mm -hmm. This is the thing with personality tests. At the end of the day, I just think that they're tools. Gotcha. Um, they're tools that'll help you kind of get to know yourself, mm -hmm. get, help you relate with yourself, help you relate with other people. Mm -hmm. And I, I enjoy the Enneagram just because it's, it's simple. You know, it, it's simple. It's just a diagram of nine numbers and there's some it can you can make it more complicated. Right. Um, but but I, I enjoy it because it's simple and it helps me understand um, myself a little bit and then even relate with other people. So I so I kind of get where you're coming from, because gotcha. there's so, several different personality tests that have, you know, Myers-Briggs is a personality test that lots of people are familiar with, too. Um, but but I enjoy the Enneagram just because it's simple. Mm -hmm. But but at the end of the day, man, like it's a it's a it's a tool you right. know, to, just to help just you to get help to too. get to get to know yourself, you know, right. because you know, obviously as a pastor, I'm a Jesus follower, too. Mm -hmm. and, and in First John, it actually says that um, like Jesus is the one like if you have a, an intimate relationship with Jesus, a real relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. he'll teach you everything you need to know about yourself. He'll teach you everything that you, you need to know about God. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like that, that's what I kind of lean on first and foremost. Okay. But the Enneagram, man, is just an incredible tool, like an incredible tool that I like to use to relate to other people. So like that's it. good. I like it. It's like I say, I, the people that I talked to and I just asked a, uh, just a regular question about it and they were like, okay, what is that? You yeah. Know, yeah. They've taken a personality test before and all that, but they, they haven't, they have never heard of Enneagram yeah. before. So. You know, I, why wouldn't anybody want to take a personality? Why would somebody maybe scared to take a personality test? Because when you sent it to me, it took me a couple of days. To yeah, take no, it, I was, I was waiting. I was, I was like, waiting on you to to answer back, and <laughs> and you told me you're like, ah, oh, no, I actually haven't taken it yet. I was like, and I said, John, you're not gonna fail the test. <laughs> you did. Right? It's not a pass or fail. Oh test. my god, I was I was kind of like because I was excited about it when you said I said, okay, you yeah. know, I need to take this, and then after I started thinking about it, I was like, oh, wait a minute, do I wait? What is gonna happen with me after I find out mm -hmm. what I am? Yeah. you know, I didn't know what I was getting into, so. But I'm, I'm glad I took the test. But mm -hmm. why do you think somebody would not want to know who they are? Well, I think that that is an incredible question to ask. Yeah. 
and to really think about. Mm -hmm. why, why would someone not want to take a test that would help them identify who they are? I think it's because deep down, like if, you, if you're going to be authentic, if mm -hmm. you're going to be, be real, when it's me alone, deep down, I think I know that there's something that's flawed about me. Right. Right. Like I was going to say, I think deep down, a lot of us mm -hmm. have a sense that there's just something not right, you know, mm -hmm. and there's lots of, uh, you know, self-help books out there, which I that which I read and enjoy because mm -hmm. I think you ought to figure out how to help yourself sometimes. Yeah. You know, I think that there's a lot of things out there that we do mm -hmm. uh, maybe to make ourselves feel better. Right. Uh, maybe try to fix the things that we feel are wrong inside of us. Um, but deep down, I think people might be afraid to jump into a personality test or um, really investigate what's going on 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 the inside, because you might feel like, like deep down something's just not right. Something's not right. You know, mm -hmm. and th that's why I, I really value um, what we're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, like because a lot of people will say like, hey, man, how you feeling? Uh, hey, man, how you doing? Um, but an entirely different question is like, Hey man, how's your soul? You know, right. like right. how's that intangible part of you, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, exists, right. That, that maybe you feel like there's some sort of sense of, there's just not something right there. Um, and, and I think, you know, as a Jesus follower, I think that God specifically has something to say about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think all of us were created with these deep desires within us that I think reveal the image of God in us, right? To be loved and pursued, um, to be honored and respected, to find home and belonging, to have impact and significance. Like, the, the, this is across the bo board, across culture, across gender. Like, this is just in us, like, right. as humans. Um, and I think a lot of people will live their life feeling like there's something wrong mm -hmm. and maybe do I just fake it till I make it, you know? That's a good one. So there's, fake it till you make yeah, it. Yeah, there's lots of people that are faking mm -hmm. or maybe you have too much integrity to fake so you mm -hmm. just feel like you're a failure, you know? And maybe you really struggle with depression. Maybe you're just, uh, everything seems to be self-defeating again and again. Right. But bro, I just don't think, I will never buy into the idea that God had in mind for you to fake and fail your way through life and then just that be it. Like, bro, I, I, I don't buy into that, right? Yeah. And so I think that's why maybe sometimes taking an inside look mm -hmm. is scary mm -hmm. because you, you feel like there's something out of place, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because all of us encounter pain, all of us encounter brokenness. Right. And it's like, well, what do I do with that? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's what you do with that a, a lot of times that will affect your soul, you know? And so that's where... Maybe that inside look is a little scary, but I believe that. because it's so close, right? Yeah. It's so it's so close to your heart. Right. It's so deep in mm -hmm. your heart. Um, those those real deep desires, and and maybe you have a maybe you have a real deep wound there. Um, but the whatever pain you might experience, even mm -hmm. diving in, mm -hmm. like the healing that you experience exactly. is is so it's much so much more. Yeah, yeah it's so, greater. Yeah, the the life that you get from that is. Yeah worth it you know and you can you can tell when you speak to a person mm -hmm. who has gone through some, some some hard some some deep painful areas of their life and they've come out of the other side of it yeah you, you can just tell it by being around them you know what i mean that's true like you can tell like and this this person has a depth to them that i think yeah. all of us desire mm -hmm. but the problem is is that like you got to go you got to be willing to go deep yes. <laughs> to get that depth yes you're <laughs> you right know? you're right and that's scary man you know you 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 talked about a lot right then, and it reminded me of um, my episode two. Me and a friend of mine, mm -hmm. Antonio Royster, we yeah, sat yeah. in here and we talked about men. Mm -hmm. And men I watched that one today, up. actually. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was a good one. It was a deep one, but it reminded me because guys not opening up, not going in deep, and letting it, letting it out. Yeah. It's a healing. Yeah. That you go through. Well, and I think like. I think the world is the way it is mm -hmm. a lot of times, um, and uh, and this isn't this isn't this might sound a little harsh, but it's not harsh. It's it's and it's not an attack. It's really a plea. Mm -hmm. Like I think the world is the way it is because I think the world is full of weak men. 
You know, oh, I think no, yeah. I think I think yeah. it's easy not mm-hmm. to take a look inside. Right. Right. I think it's easy to try to pay attention to draw attention to other things in your life and try to avoid pain. Like, bro, right. a lot of times life is about avoiding pain mm-hmm. and that's normal. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I like, mean, it's just a normal thing. It's normal. Mm-hmm. But there there's something courageous about yeah. willing to say, all right, there's something not right in there. And I'm willing to find out what that is. Exactly. And I might be scared to death, but courage isn't the absence of fear. No. It's, it's the willingness to act because, like with the presence of fear. You right. Know? So I, I, think, I think that has a lot, to, a lot to do with it. It's just that, that willingness to dive in deep. But no, I, I really agree. enjoyed that podcast with the Antonio. I thought that was good stuff. That's good, man. I, 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 that was a good, that was a good podcast and, and just being able to relate back to that podcast mm-hmm. and, 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 and hit on some things in, in that, in this podcast that, that brings that back. Just, just another reiteration of, 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 of men, of people just mm-hmm. needing to open up and, and get some of that healing. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I say, if you, if you can't, if, if you don't want to turn to anybody, you know, you can always turn to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can always turn to him. He's always a listening ear. He's always willing to be there for you and help you work through those things. I yeah. mean, I, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for him. Yeah. You know, I, I have to talk to him every day. I have to get up in the morning and say, you know, what what kind of day is it going to be? Yeah. You know, you just you, you, you getting out of bed and you just don't know yeah yeah well, and that's where and that's where like you as a as a jesus follower you understand that like there's a lot of strength mm-hmm. in that right mm-hmm. and that strength comes from we're kind of off track a little bit yeah. but that but that strength comes from the kindness that right. god is showing you mm-hmm. you know what i mean right and so that's that's a lot of what i think is missing especially if you, like if we're going to talk about men like mm-hmm. i think men might feel like kindness is weakness Right. right. But kindness isn't weakness. No. Right. Like kindness is like not reminding someone of their weakness, but like loaning someone your strength. Right. Because right. that's right. what that's what the Lord does that's for you. you do. He mm-hmm. doesn't he doesn't say, you wake up in the morning and if you're trying to have some sort of real relationship with the Lord, he's not like, John, by the way, I just want to remind you, you suck. Like that, right. that, like I don't know that guy, right? Like that's not, I, that's, that's not the that's not him. Yeah, that's not that's him. Not the Lord, I know. Like instead, what he does is he's loaning me his strength, mm-hmm. you know, and that's and true. that's what kindness is. That's what strength is. Yeah, and like that as a as a father, as a husband, um, as a leader, like I that's what I want to be. I don't want to remind people of their weaknesses because that's not what the Lord does for me. Like yeah, he loans me his strength. I need to hold a little string. Yeah. yeah just give yeah. me, just give me some of the string. Yeah, yeah. Just let me borrow. If I could, you know, write an IOU check or something <laughs> for a little string. But I don't know. That's it. bro. Yeah. But man, um, so Enneagram in, in Christianity. Yeah. And it sounds like you guys wrapping all that in to one, helping you find each other. So, Specifically, what part? How does Enneagram and Christianity? How does that both meet? Yeah, like how, how, like how does that how go, do together? go together? Yeah, well, yeah. because this is the thing: is like uh, the Enneagram isn't like explicitly Christian, right? Right. Um, and there's probably like a lot of Christian people that would say like, I'm not, I don't, I don't want anything to do with the Enneagram. You know what I mean? And it's right. like, whatever, man, do you like? Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, to me, like I said before, I think it's just a, I think it's a tool. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I'll be honest, like as a, as a pastor, um, especially in Pensacola, um, like I immediately get put in a box, Mm -hmm. right. By Mm -hmm. people. If I want to try to engage with people, if I want to try, sometimes I, I, I even try to make that maybe the last thing that someone will ask me, you know what I mean? Like, maybe make it the last (laughs) thing because you're, you're instantly going to put me in a box, Mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, well, and you know, that's for a handful of various reasons, which is what it is. But if I can use the Enneagram, for instance, um, which is just a personality assessment type thing that to get like to pique someone's interest, mm-hmm. um, because uh, like th- that's the most interesting conversations to me yeah. is like what's going on inside, like yeah. that soul wellness is right. the most interesting conversation to me. Right. And so maybe you wouldn't have it with a pastor because, you know, you, whatever experience that you had growing up or maybe that's just not your thing. Um, but if I could have a conversation with you about how, how you how you tick, 
like how you're put together, what your personality type is, like what's really unique. Um, and we can kind of jump into some of the, yeah. some of the numbers in the Enneagram. What's really unique is you, you'll find that every single personality with those deep desires that I mentioned earlier, like whatever your personality type is, there's going to be like a, like the deepest desire or, or really like a, like a, a way that you could put it is like really what your heart longs to hear. Like what, what I really, really long to hear. So uh, you took the person, you took the Enneagram and you're a, you're a three, I'm a three on the Enneagram. I'm a three, everybody. So, so if you know about Enneagram yeah. and you, you know what a three is, yeah. I, I took the test and <laughs> I'm a three. I'm a three. I'm a three. Yeah. I, I suffer from the same affliction. I'm also, yeah, I'm a also a three. Yeah. Which, which is great because a three is listed as a successful achiever, right? Okay. Okay. Which, as soon as I hear that, makes me feel great about myself. Doesn't it make you feel great about yourself, you know, too? It does. John? I, was, I was relieved. Yeah. I thought I was, you know. <laughs> you thought, like. I thought I was a piece of. No, you I'm said, oh, man, as soon as, as soon as I saw that, wow, yeah. I feel great about or, this. Or right? I thought I just wasn't even a number. Like, they yeah. was like, you know what? You, not, you don't even rate on our scale. Yeah. Like, you just not even on it. See? Yeah, I have, a, I have a friend of mine who says, I'm a 10. I'm a 10. Even though it's at only nine numbers. He goes, I'm a 10. I was like, that's not how that works. But. Uh, but no, so, yeah, so, so you're a three, right. I'm a three. Mm -hmm. Um, so we can talk about threes and every single, and every single, every single number has a, a, a lot of the same stuff that we're going to, that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. It's, I mean, it's worth like jumping into whether in the show notes, you'll have like a, a link to a test or not, like mm -hmm. whatever it, you can just Google it and right. take a test and figure it out on um, what number you are. But um, and if you want to learn more about it, you should come to Generation Church and come to Growth Track. There it is. See that plug? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shameless. But <laughs> anyway, so we're threes, right? Mm -hmm. So we're successful achievers. That means like I, I want to win. Like I, I want to win. I want to be successful at what I'm doing. And, and you feel the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and even we draw a lot of value, a lot of, self, a, a lot of self worth on what we can achieve right like am i being successful right uh am i achieving the goals that i want to achieve and so you and i will put a lot of a lot of our self-worth riding on that you know mm -hmm. um which probably helps us be successful a lot of times um but also has some negative tendencies with it right like um I, I can speak for myself i won't i won't project myself onto you even though we have the same personality type so it's probably something similar i have a tendency to not be honest with myself gotcha. right like um so, so kind of a weakness of a three is is dishonesty mm. not that like you're a liar and every right. everyone you talk to is like you're going to tell lies to everybody right. but i tend to be dishonest with with myself mm -hmm. right like that um maybe i am achieving when i'm not, really achieving. not achieving yeah yeah or um or maybe even on the inverse like i might be achieving and i might be i might be there might whatever my endeavor is whatever my my industry is whatever i'm whatever i'm running after right. to try to be successful mm -hmm. you may be experiencing success but you'd be saying well it's not enough that's not i could still i could still achieve more i could still more. achieve more oh and, and these are all these are all different you know quirks that we have with with our personality but the thing where that i really enjoy to get back to the question of like well how does this thing kind of mesh in with christianity mm -hmm. The cry of my heart as a three mm -hmm. is to be loved, not for what I do, but just because, just for who I am. Mm -hmm. Like, because that's how you and I probably relate with a lot of people right. is, right. man, I, I have friends or, I, or my, in the different relationships that I have, it's because I'm successful. Mm -hmm. Like, you want to hang out with me because I'm successful. Like, I, I'm going to advance because of what I can achieve. Yeah. Um, and, and that's how we kind of relate to other people in the world. But deep down, really what, what I want is I want to be loved because, I, not because what I achieve, mm -hmm. but just because of who I am. Who I am. Right. And, yeah. and that speaks a lot because when you and I are unhealthy, when threes are unhealthy, um, we can adopt other personality aspects from other numbers. Right. Right. And right. so that's how the Enneagram is kind of all connected. When you Google it, if you've never seen it, it's kind of like this diagram and a bunch of numbers are connected and you're like, did, is this a Ouija board? That's what you're talking right. about before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're all kind of connected. And all that is, is just letting you know, like, okay, so as a three, 
when I'm under stress or when I'm unhealthy, mm -hmm. like I, I have a tendency to pick up the most negative personality tendencies of a nine. Mm. And a nine is someone, there's actually more presidents have been nines than any other president or uh, any other personality type because they have the ability as the nine kind of sits at the top of the Enneagram, they have the ability to relate with all the all other personality wow. types, right? And so that's wow. a really healthy thing about wow. a nine. But sometimes what a nine will do mm. is they won't voice their opinion mm. because they want to get along with everyone else. Gotcha. And so what a three will do, mm. like myself as, as, uh, as a wanting to achieve uh -huh. or be successful if i feel like i'm not being successful mm -hmm. if i'm if i'm like and some of my coworkers could tell you this like if i feel like we're not being successful what i have a tendency to do is then kind of lean back lean back and kind of disengage yeah and become apathetic mm -hmm. because if i don't think it's going to be successful like i don't care like uh, I, I don't want to be a part of this i don't care like do, do you right you know? and so that's a really negative personality type or a, a really negative kind of quirk that, that threes, threes have, have when, when yeah. you're unhealthy. So mm -hmm. you can kind of disengage. Right. And there, there might've been times in your, in your life and in your career that you've seen yourself like, well, this isn't going the way Where that I, I want, want it to, to go. So I'm, gonna, so I'm mm -hmm. just going to disengage. Yeah. Like I'm going to lean back. I'm going to become apathetic. I don't care. And in business, you might go, well, that's, that's probably wise because you don't, maybe you don't want to be a part of something that's not being successful. Right. Um, okay. Well, and that's why lots of threes are entrepreneurs, are business right. owners, are business leaders. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also why a lot of threes have um, a lot of wreckage in their personal life. Oh, have have a lot of a lot of wreckage in their relationships. Yeah. Because if this relationship isn't going the way that I wanted to, I'm, I'm gonna just lean um, back. I'm, I don't I'm really care anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna disengage. <laughs> and you can experience a lot of brokenness, you know. Yeah. And you, and you can wonder like why is this always happening you know what i mean because you can get in these loops and these you know, you know what i mean like have you ever felt like you've had the same job over and over and over again right or you or you feel like man i date the same girl same over girl. and over and over again yeah. it's like well because you're not identifying like you know that there's something not right in there but you don't want to dive in to figure out what it why is. am i doing this mm -hmm. like what is what is broken in here right and that's why as like as a jesus follower that's why i i like to um use the enneagram as a tool to relate with other mm -hmm. people because i i just want to be loved for who i am mm -hmm. not for what i do gotcha. and as a jesus follower i believe like that's exactly how that's exactly what jesus has displayed towards me right like in his life um in his death and his mm -hmm. resurrection like that's what he showed me gotcha. that like when I couldn't help myself, right? You know what I mean. Like when before I was even on the scene, he decided, like I'm going to step into history at the worst time of history because I want to rescue you, right? Because I love you mm -hmm. before you did anything, right? And even in in my own story, like when I was experiencing, um, e even as a young man, when I was experiencing, like a lot of just darkness and brokenness, and I couldn't help my I couldn't help myself, and I. I felt like I, nothing I was doing was being successful. Like that's when I discovered that there was someone who loved me just for who I am. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't have to perform. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do, I don't have to be anything special. Right. I just have, I just have to be who I was created, was created to be. To be. Yeah. yeah. And, and to find out that like, when God looks at me, he says, you're my son and I love you and I'm pleased with you. Yeah. Like, that's an incredible story to me. Like that, that comes from when Jesus was baptized by mm -hmm. John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. So there's a really cool scene that happens mm -hmm. where, um, like, uh, there's a voice from heaven, right? And there's a dove that comes down, you know, and like, there's this voice and this voice t talking about Jesus, the voice of God. He says, this is my son who I love mm -hmm. in whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. and, and man, the best news for me as a three mm -hmm. is that, that's exactly, exactly what God says about me. You're my son and I love you yeah. and I'm pleased with you. Right. Yeah, but I, but I screwed up here. I'm not doing good enough. You're my son yeah. and I love you mm -hmm. and I'm pleased with you. Yeah. I'm like, bro, that speaks life to me. I love like, it. Because I, I, I want to achieve and I want to mm -hmm. do, but what happens when I don't? Right. You know, like how do you, as a three, how do you stop yourself from failing? You, you, 
you can't. You can't. What are you going to do? Try harder? Right. You just like, just, okay, does that help? No. 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 <laughs> no. You know, so the, as a Jesus follower, that's why, I, that's why I love, that's why I really enjoy using the Enneagram as a tool yeah. because it really speaks to, hey man, what's that, what's that deep desire in your heart? Yeah. Like what, what, what's the cry of your heart right now? Yeah. And it's really interesting because for every single number, mm -hmm. I can show you, hey, this is what you would love to hear. Yeah. And without a doubt, whether you're a Jesus follower or not, right. man, whether you're just, you, you know, I, I was there. talking to you at right. Cigar Factory or mm -hmm. whatever, like you, you're, you're going to be like, oh, wow, yeah, I really identify with that. Yeah. And then I, as a pastor, I can say, hey, you know who says that about you? Like, I, I think Jesus does. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you can like, say that. So, yeah. like, bro, I, like, right. I, that, that's why I really enjoy using it as a tool. That's but, great, man. I, you know, and I, that makes me feel better as a three, you know, because I was trying to decipher, you know, and like the, the test, you know, I could pay a little bit more and go into depth, but I didn't because yeah, I but knew why, I was yeah. coming. Why when you know me, bro? I know you, so I can just come <laughs> and talk to you. And that kind of, that made me feel better as a three. Um, man, so we all have, we, we may have these different numbers. People mm -hmm. have different numbers and we may be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. with somebody yeah that may be a different number than we are yeah and i mean that could be a little scary yeah not knowing yeah you know because how well do you really know the person you're in a relationship whether you're married <laughs> whether you're boyfriend or girlfriend yeah, yeah. how well you may know some surface things but how well do you really know them so yeah. i mean how how can a how can somebody that's a different number let's just say we might as well say a three. Yeah, yeah. How can a three get along with, let's just say, a, a two? Well, let's do or, a, well, or let, another number. Well, let's do a one. A right? one. Uh, okay. The reason why I can do a one is because my wife's a one. Okay, right? yeah, let's do a one. So, let's do a one. So I'm a, I'm a three. <laughs> okay. Uh, and my wife is a one. Mm -hmm. uh, a one is a moral perfectionist. Okay. Right? So that's a, that's a one. So y you know somebody who has to follow the rules. Right. You're got like, you. you probably know yeah. somebody like that. Yeah, they they, gotta, they, they gotta have to follow the rules. The rules. Mm -hmm. Like they are not going to do a rolling stop. Right. Like they're going to stop <laughs> they, and then they're going to go. Gonna, <laughs> right? right. Like so m my wife is a one. She really cares about the rules. Right. So I'm a three. Um, and this is the thing about threes. And you know this. I don't really care about yeah, rules. Yeah, I can bend them a little you bit. You know what I mean? Know made well, because be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know they're made to be bent right. because I make rules. Exactly. You know what I mean? That like, is true. You're yeah. a business owner. You make rules. I make the rules. Those rules aren't for you. <laughs> they're for everybody else. <laughs> you know? And so this is like the, this is like the this maybe is not so great thing about right. a three, right? <laughs> no, because right. like, hey. I, and some people are not going to be okay yeah, with that. Yeah, people who made mm -hmm. the rules was probably somebody like me yeah. and they didn't make them for him. So he didn't make them for me. Right. So that's how, so, so my wife and I are different. Yeah. Right. So, um, like, uh, so it's nice knowing that about each other because I know, all right. Um, uh, uh let's just talk about loading the dishes. Right. Oh, okay. So a, a one mm -hmm. knows that there's a right way to load the dishes. Yeah. Right. There's a right way to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and a three is like, uh, well, did they get clean? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if they got clean, then we're good. Right. Right. But a one is like, no, you, you have to load it like this. Right. The jets go a certain way. They know all that stuff. Right. Because they care. Right. Um, you know, if a, I'm a three, I, 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 don't, I don't particularly care. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't care how to. I'm like, did we, there. did we score? Right. Did we win? Yeah. Like yeah, done. What's the end game. Yeah. Next. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, and so, but it's really good to know that about each other because ultimately, like, especially if you're going to pursue a relationship, with someone that that you hope is long term, or, or 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 you're married to someone, you want that to be long term. Like I, uh, it's really good to know that about each other mm. because I, I can give grace. Like I can I can be prepared. Right. Right. Knowing, knowing like okay, so I, like yeah, knowing like okay, so this is my personality type. Like this is my tendency, mm. but I know that this is her tendency. Yeah. Um, and so what I can do, like as a husband. Mm. Like one of the things that that's modeled to me in, in the New Testament is like, well, I'm, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to serve her. Right. And so maybe maybe as a husband, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, well, I, I care about this, but I know she cares about this. So I'm going to do it this way. Yeah. Right. A yeah. And, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But it's really good to know, like your, the tendencies of a of a person, a personality type right. of a person, because right. you can relate to one you another. Also, she, she can instantly 
find out when I'm unhealthy. She knows right out of the gate mm -hmm. when I'm unhealthy because you have these, uh, so they're called, you can call them rumble strips. Like, you know, when okay. you're on the freeway, on the freeway. and you yeah. like that. So there's rumble strips in your, in, in your, per, with your personality. When I tend to be disengaged, yeah. right? That's a, that's a rumble that's strip. Cool. Like Brian, there's something off mm -hmm. in you, like mm -hmm. what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. And so m my wife can, she knows that about me. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I have that, I have yeah. that, I have that rumble strip. Off. Yeah. Yeah. And so a one go like, will take on some of the worst personality, uh, worst personality traits or unhealthiest personality traits of a four when they're unhealthy. Well, fours are very creative, which is good. And, and that's a lot of your artsy people. That's a lot of your creatives or fours, but also they tend to be real melancholy sometimes. Okay. And so when, when my wife is under stress or is unhealthy, like, like there's something off or not right. Like all of a sudden she, she can become really melancholy, really did like not, not like, Oh man, I'm totally depressed, but really get into a, into a healthy, unhealthy thought pattern. Gotcha. And you're like, well, this, this doesn't seem like you. Right. But, and I can identify it early on mm -hmm. and it's, you can know like, okay, so, so like what's going on? Like what's going on? Like, let's talk, yeah. let's connect, let's figure out what's off. But we know that about each other. Right. And, and that's just really valuable, man. If you want to stay committed into a relationship, because this is what's true is like, uh, bro, I'm going to bring plenty of brokenness yes. into the road. And she's yes. going to bring plenty of brokenness right. into the relationship. Yeah. I mean, we're human. That's it. Yeah. That's but, it. but if I want it to, if I want it to last or have any kind of a longevity, if I want to keep any kind of vows or commitments that I made, like it's good to know what, what, how God has wired this person or how this person's put together so that I can relate to them in a way, um, where I can be loving to them. Gotcha. Right. So like yeah. my wife knows that the cry of my heart is to be loved for who I am. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if I feel like I'm not being successful or I'm frustrated about something like my wife knows one of the most encouraging things she can say to me is like, well, like, like, well, I just love you for you. Like, well, I think you're great. <laughs> whether that, whether that, happened yeah. or not or whether yeah. this did like you know what i mean whether whether you were successful at your job or yeah. not or at this this goal I'm that you had or not yeah, like i think you're great yeah and i'm like we're uh, i'm in <laughs> you know what i mean like she instantly instantly yeah. instantly better, better instantly better yeah, yeah because she she was able to tap into the cry of my heart mm -hmm. you know and so it. it's a really i mean it's a really good way to relate to well, each other good. no i like it i mean you know i'm, I'm glad you were able to to, to bring your, your um, marriage relationship into it and give us an example of, you know, two different types mm -hmm. getting along. Because, like I say, it's, it's all about coexisting yeah. and being a part of somebody's life and understanding them in a way to where you don't have to, you, you know what makes them tick. Mm -hmm. So you know if something's off. Yeah, yeah. So you can kind of not, let's say, agonize that. Mm hmm but try to lean, go, go, go to another avenue to yeah. try to make it fix and bring them out of that to, yeah. so they can get back to themselves. Yeah, well, and not even necessarily to go like, I'm going to fix you, right? right? Because no, fix, nobody yeah. wants to feel that way, right. but, but to make room for a person. Yeah. You know what I mean? To be like, oh, I understand. Mm -hmm. you, you're probably struggling with something. Right. So I'm not going to take this wildly personally that, right. you're, that you're reacting in this way. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take this personally exactly. because this is just... This It'll is just, make me mad. Like, yeah, I don't and this is just, myself. yeah, this is just mm. kind of how you're, how you're wired. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make room for you, there you go. um, and then relate to you authentically mm. as opposed to, I'm going to get up in my feelings right. because I can't believe you talk to me like that. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? quick to get up in our feelings. I mean, <laughs> man, yeah. I, I, I be in my feelings like yeah. all the time and then I, I, I snap out of it kind of quick yeah. though. You know, I, I'd say, you know what, I, I have these self talks with myself mm -hmm. and I'm like this. Okay. Yeah. How how am I acting? Like how am I gonna deal with this pro this issue? Yeah. Like, am I gonna be in my feelings or am I gonna try to figure? Am I gonna be the yeah. person or what am I gonna do? You know. So well, it's like how long do I want this to last? Well, and yeah, and feelings are really powerful, man. They are. Like they are extremely they are. powerful. But I don't want to be. Uh, I, I don't want to follow them everywhere they lead me. Right. If I follow my feelings everywhere they lead me, like man, my life would be a wreck. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so I don't, I don't want to follow my feelings every single place that they, they lead me. I don't, I don't, I don't want my feelings to dictate to my dictate life, life. Right. I, I want to be able to pause for a second and be like, what am I feeling and why am I feeling this? Right. Right. And right. so like, that's part of, that's part of being able to get to know yourself, being that's able true. to get to know the people around you, yeah. understanding like, man, I really want to feel 
honored and respect. I feel disrespected right now. Yeah. Well, like I have a choice at that moment. Mm -hmm. Like, am I going to, am I going to fight? Am I going to make, make it out like, Hey, you should respect me. You know what I mean? Like, am I going to fight? So you respect me right. or am I going to fight to know that like, man, I'm respected on a level mm -hmm. that like, I'll never fully appreciate. Yeah. Um, because I, I think the creator of the universe like pursued me and wanted to rescue me. He, he thought I was valuable enough to rescue me. Right. Like, so instead of flexing on John, so he respects me, I, I'm just going to be like, you know what? M instead of being led by my feelings to that place, that's probably going to bring some brokenness to my life. I, I'm, I'm just going to fight to know like, you know what? I, I'm respected on a level I'll, I'll, I don't think I'll ever fully appreciate. Yeah. And I'd rather live there than, than just invite brokenness into every single compartment of my life, you know? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Man, that's good, man. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you shine a little light on the threes and, and bringing a relationship. Man, so I, I did send the Enneagram to a couple other people. Yeah. And we could touch on them lightly because, like I say, this is we, – we, we we're gonna wrap up we're gonna wrap up the show a little bit, mm -hmm. but let's touch on um I had a friend of mine yeah. and she's a two. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she's a two and then I had another friend which is a nine. Okay, yeah. I sent it to another guy that he's a three. Mm. But we talked about the threes already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the twos. Just just a short little give us a short little brief yes. about twos and what they do so twos really really care about people gotcha. like they really they really genuinely care about mm -hmm. people um and so two, twos are awesome to have around right yeah. like you you have enjoyed having a two in your life like i okay. promise you because okay. they have made sure mm -hmm. are you good you're good you're good is there anything you need right yeah. can i take care of you <laughs> you know and you're like i love having this person around mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um and so twos care about about you they also care about um they they care about how kind of how things are going yeah around them yeah they care like they that. care about everybody yeah. around them yeah. you know because there's also like so there's not to jump into it and make it super complicated but there's um triads right so like two three two three and four are kind of in a triad together mm -hmm. and it's and it's triad just because it's those three numbers are, are together right. one one of the things that twos threes and fours have in common is that we're heart centered Gotcha. Right. Like we're really, we really led with our heart, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so twos big are big time feelers, yeah. right? Like they really, they really will care about a person. Mm -hmm. And so as a three, mm -hmm. you likely have a, a two, what's called a wing, like, okay. like a, like a, like, so a two wing or a four wing. Gotcha. And so there's probably been a season in your life or there's probably like, you might have a tendency to really care and want to take care of people around you. Like you have employees, you probably really want to take care of them. I do. Right. I do want to take care of them. And so, I, yeah. I, I, I care about y'all. I really do. And so, like that—that's just pr probably part of it. So twos, twos really care about people. Mm -hmm. But something that can be unhealthy about a two is they will ignore like their own needs oh. uh, and take care of other people's needs, gotcha. right? Uh, and what ends up happening a lot of times is that like a two will bend over backwards to help you, mm -hmm. but will never ask for help, right? And so it, it's one of those things where yeah. this person can be giving and giving right. and giving and giving and helping and helping and helping and helping and just like really struggling yeah. on the, on the inside. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and it's one of these, it's one of these things where th they won't, they won't ask they you for, ask for help. They won't ask you they for help, ask for you know? And so when you have a two in your life, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's really good to know that, okay, like this person is going to give and give and give and give, but, but they might need some help need some help you know what i mean and so especially and not going to ask for it. yeah well so especially if you're like leading a two mm -hmm. like uh, or like in or you're you you work with a two mm -hmm. like it's really or good or dating a two yeah or dating a two yeah right. yeah you should really make sure that like that 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 person is also take, taking care of themselves you know what i mean like uh, twos never say no they say yes to everything and so you need to help a two say yeah. no you know, help them say no. So you need to, sometimes you need you to help it. Say no. so you, yeah. You need to help it to say no. Um, but th that's just, uh, and, and sometimes it's hard to paint with like a really broad brush, gotcha. you know, to say like, Oh, every two is like this. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of a, an overall tendency yeah. of somebody who, who would be a two like, go ahead. No, no, I, I, that's, that's good insight. Mm -hmm. That's good insight on the twos. 
What about a nine? Like my other friends, and she's going to listen to this podcast yeah. too. But she was more like a nine. Yeah. yeah. So so nines are like every number. Every number, I think, is there, there's there's beauty in every single number, mm -hmm. right? And there, but there's also like tendencies that people have that that happen when you're under stress or when mm -hmm. you're unhealthy. And so like a nine is like the ultimate peacemaker. Like, okay. That nine is an ultimate peacemaker. Like they can relate. Like I said before about like more presidents have been nines than any other number on the Enneagram, which oh is really interesting goodness. because they can relate to so many other people. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's kind of a good tendency if you're going to be try to be a politician. Right. Right. Because right. you need these people to vote for you and these people to vote for you and those people to vote for you. <laughs> so like there's some there's some unhealthiness there. But a lot of times they're they're peacemakers. Right. Mm -hmm. So they can relate with every like with so many of the other numbers. Mm -hmm. Um but, uh, which is great, you know, you want a person like that around. I like I, one of our, uh, one of my coworkers in our, on, at our church, um, she's a nine and uh, she, she's great to have around, you know what yeah. I mean? Because she's just a peacemaker. She's, yeah. she works so well with literally yeah. every single she person. She can talk to any personality. Yeah, man, she works, so, yeah. She, so, she works great with them, but, but sometimes like she has a tendency to n not share her own perspective, oh. right? Not share her own uh like w what she wants mm -hmm. you know she'll, mm -hmm. she'll hold her opinion to herself right which in an organization in a relationship like that that, that can be real dangerous mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. i mean because all of a sudden this person who's a nine who's relating with everyone else is not sharing their opinion mm -hmm. or how they feel and they can feel really lonely they can feel really yeah they, they can feel yeah kind of like really alone mm -hmm. like that oh that no one cares about how I feel or what I think, yeah. you know? And so as a nine, it, that, that's like a, that's kind of a, like a good rumble strip to, to, to know if you start feeling that way, like, mm -hmm. um, like it's good, to, it's good to take a dive in and figure out like, why, am, why, why am I, I why am I feeling this way? Yeah. And if you, you have a relationship with a nine, if you work with a nine, mm -hmm. whatever that is, like it, it's good to make sure like, uh, sometimes in a meeting we'll, we'll be like, Hey, so what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Like ask specifically, ask specific yeah, questions so like, yeah, about so if what you're, they feel. Yeah, so if you're leading, they can tell you though. Yeah, they, they can tell yeah. you because they, they like, oh wait, oh yeah, yeah they, they might they might be a little adverse to it, right? But be like, no, no. So tell me what you really think about mm -hmm. this. Like, and and if you make room for that person, like they they'll, they'll do that. Gotcha. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll yeah. operate in that. Yeah. But if you're working with somebody or you you have a relationship with somebody, you really need to ask them. Yeah. What do you think? Because mm -hmm. they're not going to tell you what they think. Right. They're gonna. They're gonna be like, well, what do you think? Yeah, they're a peacemaker, right? They wanna, but, but so that's so. If you're a nine, that that might be a tendency. That, that might you. be a little mm -hmm. tendency. No, I I like it. I mean, I learning so much about the Enneagram, guys. It's it's um, it's a good tool. I feel like it's a really good tool. I'm, I want everybody out there to take it. Like I, I feel like you need to know a little bit about yourself. You want to know a little bit about yourself. You you know you and your spouse or you and your you whoever you're in a relationship with you guys. Y'all take it and then get back with us. Like, you know, if you know me, I could get you in touch with Brian and he could tell you a little bit about it. Or maybe just you may want to just kind of visit the church. Yeah. Over come, there. Yeah. Come hang out with us. Come hang out with us this Sunday. It's going to yeah. be good. I'm teaching this Sunday. Come hang out. OK. And I then, definitely want to come on a day that you're teaching. Like, I mean, I, I don't. Not to say to the other guys, but I, you know, uh, I'd like to hey, see you in action. Bro. I, I hear, I hear, I, hear I love those action. other guys. Come on, man, it's, it's all good. <laughs> right. But no, if uh, yeah, come hang out at Generation Church. It's at the Rex Theater. We have services at nine and ten thirty. Mm -hmm. And the first three weeks of every single month, what we what we started talking about, we do we do this growth track. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so man, man, come. We, we just want to partner with you and figure out because, like I said at the beginning, man. From, God's plan for you was to grow, to become something. Absolutely. So, man, it's an awesome privilege that we have to partner with people in, in that journey. And yeah. so at Growth Track, man, we want to equip you. We want to help you um, kind of learn and understand where, where you're at, how God knit you together, mm -hmm. and so that you can relate authentically with other people. With other people. And, and ultimately grow, yeah. you know, and, and make room for people, love people. I know that's a, that's right. a wild concept. You know we got to get back closer. I mean... The, the pandemic has got us to where we're so much apart. We want to be by ourselves so much. But listen, a lot of people have a lot to say. They got a lot to talk about. They need to they need that closure. They need some, they need to feel close to some people. You know, I mean, it's it's it's, it's good to get back and, and, and talk to people and feel a little closeness. Um, I love it. I love it. Brian, is it anything else you want to tell them, man? I mean, I know you're up here at the Rex. I mean. Is there anything else you want to talk to them about? Is it a message out there you want to give them? Oh, bro. Um, 
You know, to, don't be, you got to be careful asking <laughs> know, a pastor right? if there's a message you want to give you. You got to leave them with something. You want something. this podcast to be 30 more minutes, no. bro? No, no, no. Well, no we can't. Hey, no, from the be- <laughs> for real, with what we've talked about with like how God knit you together, like what, what I would want people to to hear, like, mm-hmm. like really, really hear and sense is that like no matter who you are, like you're not an accident, That's right? Him. Like yeah. no matter what you've been through, like there's never been a moment w- where God hasn't loved you, right? where you've been too distant or too far. Like lots of people, man, when it comes to having some sort of relationship with the Lord, it goes back with what I was talking about with like, yeah, but I, ha- I have to do, I have to achieve, I have to, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, that's, that's, that's not how God wants to relate to you at all. Like he sees you, mm-hmm. he knows you. Yeah. And he loves you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about that. That's like it. you're right, he's there's, right. There's nothing you can nothing do about that. Nothing you can that. do about it. He's and so, love you regardless. yeah, no matter no matter where you're at, yeah. like you're not you're not an accident. Right. Like, and uh, if you're if you're interested, if you're investigating, mm-hmm. if you're trying to get back to maybe a faith that you had, mm-hmm. that it some of that might be scary. Right. Like when we talked about before that inside look Mm -hmm. like some of that might might be scary. But I I think whatever change you're after, like real change can happen. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I'm most interested in this soul wellness Mm -hmm. is because if real change happens, it happens from the inside out, not from the outside in. And, and so no matter where you're at, if you're investigating, if maybe you think about going back or maybe maybe you are a Jesus follower, I just want to encourage you uh, like, man, he's he's for you. He's not against you. He's not eager to punish you. And like you can experience like real life, real soul wellness and spiritual healing. Um, and like God will meet you there. So. Yeah, there it is. I. Brian, I, I really appreciate it. Thanks, bro. I, re- I do, man. I mean, it's 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 an inspiration. It's a breath of fresh air. Yeah. You know, I, I like talking about, I like hearing about it. I like hearing about what you do. Um, I'm excited about the Enneagram. Um, I will post, it will be a link once we put this one out uh, where you guys can go on there and take the Enneagram test. Uh, I encourage you to. Um, so this, that wraps it up, man. I mean, yeah. I, I I bro, can't say enough. Bro, it's my privilege. Thanks yeah. for having me, man. Yeah, I really yeah, man. appreciate it. Anytime, man. Anytime. I mean, we'll bring you back. We'll talk about something else. Nice. We'll find out something yeah, else yeah. you got going on, brother. Yeah. We'll bring it back. <laughs> man, I appreciate it again, man. And thanks a lot. All right, bro. All right.